Hello, let us see the first question. Give the correct order of initials true or false for following statements. They gave four statements. Statement 1. Number of electrons having L is equal to 0 is 10 in palladium. Statement 2. The value of Z effective for 3D electron of chromium and 3D electron of manganese is same as number of electron in D subshell of chromium and manganese are the same. Statement 3. Multiplicity of Fe is equal to that of Ni plus 2. And statement 4. Value of L by N for last electron of element having atomic number 57 is 0 0.4. And uh, they gave four options. In these four options, option D is correct. Means first three statements are false and uh, four statement is true. So let us see how this option is correct. First option, palladium atomic number is 46 and electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. 4s2 3d10 4p6 5s0 4d10 L is equal to 0 means s orbital 1s contain 2 electrons 2s contain 2 electrons 3s contain 2 electrons 4s contain 2 electrons therefore total number of electrons in L is equal to 0 is 8. That's why statement 1 is wrong. Let us check the second statement. Effective nuclear charge so it can be denoted by Z effective or Z star. So effective nuclear charge Z effective is calculated by this equation. Z effective is equal to Z minus sigma where this Z indicates uh, atomic number sigma shielding constant we know the atomic number of chromium and manganese we need to calculate a sigma value for chromium and manganese but how to calculate sigma value so sigma value can be calculated by using one formula sigma is equal to 0 0.35 into number of n shell electrons minus 1 plus 0 0.85 into number of n minus 1 shell electrons plus 1 into inertial electrons. Here you have to remember one thing that is the second term 0 0.85 into number of electrons in n minus 1 shell electrons is applicable only for d and f orbitals. applicable to D and F only. Let us calculate the sigma value for chromium and manganese. Chromium atomic number is 24, electronic configuration is argon 4s1 3d5. Manganese atomic number is 25, electronic configuration is argon 4s2 3d5. If we observe these two elements, the electron difference is there in 4s orbital, 3d contains same number of electrons. Here they ask to calculate Z effective value for 3d electrons now, that's why we should consider only 3d orbital, no need to take 4s orbital while we are calculating sigma value. Let us calculate the sigma value for chromium and manganese, sigma is equals to 0 0.35 into number of electrons in nth shell 5 na minus 1 is there in the equation that's why we have to take 4 means 0 0.35 into number of nth shell electrons minus 1 is there na that's why we have to take 0 0.35 into 4 plus 1 into inner shell electrons inner shell electrons are 18 
this is 1.4 plus 18 that is equals to 19.4 this sigma value is same for chromium and manganese because both the elements contain same number of electrons in 3d orbital let us find the z effective value for chromium z effective is equal to z minus sigma na? so for chromium atomic number is 24 minus here sigma value is 19.4 that is equal to 4.6 for manganese z effective is equal to atomic number of manganese is 25 na? so 25 minus 19.4 that is equal to 5.6 means z effective of chromium is 4.6 for manganese it is 5.6 therefore z effective values are not same for chromium and manganese this statement is also wrong let us check the third statement multiplicity is equals to 2 s plus 1 2 k plus plus 1 where s is equals to total spin If we take iron atom, atomic number is 26, electronic configuration is argon 4s2 3d6, 3d6 means how can we write the electrons according to Hund's rule we have to fill the electrons like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Here number of unpaid electrons which is shown by small n is equals to 4 4 unpaid electrons there no? for paid electrons spin is 0 plus half minus half no? total spin 0 for unpaid electrons for each unpaid electron spin is plus half 4 unpaid electrons means total spin s is equals to 4 into half that is equals to 2 therefore multiplicity is equals to 2s plus 1 na? 2 into 2 plus 1 that is equals to 5 means multiplicity of iron atom is 5 let us find the multiplicity of Ni plus 2 ion nickel atomic number is 28 electronic configuration is argon 4s2 3d 8 3d 8 means we can fill the electrons like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 number of unpaired electrons 2 so total spin is equals to 2 into half here total spin 0 0 0 here this is plus half plus half 2 plus half so 2 into plus half that is equals to only 1 therefore multiplicity is equals to 2s plus 1 na? so s value 1 that's why 2 into 1 plus 1 that is equals to 3 means multiplicity of fe atom is 4 whereas the multiplicity of na plus 2 ion is 3 based on this what we can say multiplicity values are not same for Fe atom and Ni plus 2 IR. So, this statement is also false. Let us check the fourth statement. Lanthanum atomic number is 57 and electronic configuration is xenon 6s2 5d1. For 5d orbital, what is the n value? Here, n value is equal to 5. What about L value? L value is equals to 0 for S orbital, L value 1 for P orbital, L value 2 for D orbital, L value 3 for F orbital. Here it is 5 D na, so D means L value 2. L is equals to 2. They ask to calculate L by N value for this na. So that's why L by N is equals to L value 2 N value 5. So that is equals to 
0.4. Based on this discussion, finally, what we can conclude? First three statements are false, whereas the fourth statement is true. That's why option D is correct for this question. Hope this answered the question. Thanks. Let us see the second question. The correct set of quantum numbers for the last electron of Na plus is what? We gave four options. 3, 0, 0 minus half. 3, 1, 0 plus half. 3, 1, 1 plus half. 2, 1, 0 minus half. Let us see the solution for this question. Sodium atomic number is 11. Electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Sodium plus ion. Electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Because one of the electron is removed from 3s orbital. For 2p orbital, small n value 2, l value 1. Because I already said L is equal to 0 for S, so L is equal to 1 for P, L is equal to 2 for D, L is equal to 3 for F. So, this is PR term, that's why L value 1 for this. ML value, take 2P orbital, Plus 1, minus 1, 0. ML value, ML value is 0. <laughs> MS is equal to plus half or minus half. We can take anything. So, MS is equal to minus half. So, option D is correct. Because 2, 1, 0, minus half is given in option D. So, option D is correct. Hope this answers the question. Let us see the third question. Which of the following statements is correct for SO2Cl2? They gave the structure of SO2Cl2 here and they gave the bond angles. They gave four statements. Statement A. It contains P pi P pi and P pi D pi. Statement B. It has regular tetrahedral geometry. C. Theta 1 is greater than Theta 3. D. Plane which contains maximum number of atoms is 4. Let us check the solution for this question. Here, in SO2Cl2 molecule, there is a pi bond between sulfur and oxygen. Oxygen, 2p orbital, as sulfur, 3d orbitals combined to form pi bonds between sulfur and oxygen. So, p pi, d pi bond will exist between sulfur and oxygen. Like that, how many P pi D pi bonds are there? Two SO double bonds are there, na? that's why two P pi D pi bonds are there in SO2 Cl2. They gave P pi P pi and P pi D pi. So, that statement is false. Let us see the second statement. We know that every oxygen contains three lone pairs on it and every chlorine atom contains three lone pairs. Due to lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, bond pair repulsions in SO2Cl2 molecule, instead of regular tetrahedral geometry, it has distorted tetrahedral geometry. They gave regular tetrahedral geometry, that's why this statement is also wrong. In third statement, they said that theta1 is greater than theta3. The theta1 means OSO, one angle, theta3 means CLSO one angle. The bond angle between two double bonds is always higher than that of the bond angle between one double bond and one single bond. So because more repulsions are possible between two double bonds, due to more repulsions, angle will be slightly increased. Here, one single bond, one double bond is there, now. that's why due to less repulsions compared to SO2, SO bonds, here repulsions are less between these two bonds. More repulsions are possible between two double bonds and less repulsions are possible between one single bond and one double bond. That is the reason the theta 1 is more than the theta 3. So that's why this statement is correct. Let us see the fourth statement. If we observe the 
3D structure of SO2Cl2. S double bond go, double bond go, Cl towards us and the Cl far away from us. Above the plane, below the plane. If we consider the horizontal plane, sulfur, oxygen, oxygen, three atoms are there on the horizontal plane. If we consider vertical plane, chlorine, sulfur, chlorine, three atoms are there on the vertical plane. Means at a time, how many atoms are possible in a single plane is three. In that option, they give four. That's why that option is wrong. And so, finally, what we can conclude is statement one, two, four are wrong. Only statement three is correct. That's why option C is correct for this question. Hope this answered the question. Thank you.